Okay, we are back in the parking lot. This is Rich from Boots and Jeans Riders. What we're gonna cover today is a basic cone weave. This is the basic. And the purpose of the basic cone weave is to get you to move your bike under you. Remember, you're not counter steering, you're counter balancing your bike. Just in case you come across some objects in the road and you're going at a slow speed, you know, 10 miles and under where you can actually turn your handlebars, you don't panic and start duck walking your bike, especially if there's a lot of obstacles. What the basic cone weave does is let you be in control of your bike at slow speeds. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna ride the, the basic cone weave and we're gonna talk about some things on how to approach the cone weave. Also, just wanna cover this first. You don't really need cones. You can do this in an empty parking lot just with the parking spaces. You know, the parking spaces are nine feet apart. With the basic cone weave, we set it up at 14 feet. Normally in our course, we'll do it at 15 feet, but today I got it at 14 feet, just one feet shorter than we would normally do it. But all our elements remain the same. You maneuver in a friction zone, steady throttle, look where you want to go. Now, one of the problems people have with the basic cone weave is they like to look down at the cone. You don't need to look down at it. You can see it with your peripheral vision. Of course, I had to measure this today because I'm not in a normal parking lot. But you know, the normal parking lot, each space is about nine feet. So what you can do is, if you don't have any cones, obviously a lot of people use cut off tennis balls or whatever markers you can use, just use them. But once you practice this, go somewhere on the street and go around some manhole covers. Make sure the cover is on it just in case you don't get around it. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do is put in the video that we made about the parking space weave, either up here or at the end of this video or in the description section. So you can click on that and watch the parking space weave. So you wanna get out in the parking lot and start practicing, looking where you wanna go, turn your head to the next parking space. But like I said today, Matter of fact, let me cover one thing when it comes to the, the basic cone weave. Let me get the camera and show you something. The cones I have are, I think they're like nine feet. Obviously, you just got to be careful when you're using tennis balls and the small MSF cones because you may clear it with the front wheel, but you may not clear it with the rear wheel. So I'm going to do two rides for sure. One where I'm going straight and not really maneuvering and letting the bike move under me. And each and every time, I've done this before in a video, but each and every time, my front wheel is going to clear, but the rear wheel may not, or the saddlebag may hit it. So you might want to think of the cones. Let me get a cone. I'll be right back. You might want to think of a cone as a tall object you want to get around, like the pole at gas stations or any pole that you come across. So I'm going to show you a different angle with the camera and show you what I'm talking about with these particular cones that you need. I would say I would use these more than anything else. Got to be careful because they're lightweight. It'll blow it away. The wind will blow it away. But when you're using the small cones, a lot of people tend to maneuver the bike around the small cones really quick, not realizing that if it was a pole or anything taller, maybe a curb, your saddlebags or your rear wheel may hit it. Because, you know, talk to any truck driver or anybody who's been in driving school, they know there's a, a thing of called rear wheel cheat, where the front wheel will go and the rear wheel will follow a different track and you will hit this. Bring the camera down so you can see it. As you can see right here, if my front wheel will clear this, and actually my pipe will hit that cone if I don't clear it enough, or the saddlebag if you are have a cone that's short, you may clear it, but the saddlebag may hit it. So we're gonna put this back. So what I'm gonna do is set the camera up so you can see me coming towards the cone. And matter of fact, I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough and show you how you approach this. Just if you was riding on the street and you're approaching an object on the street. Okay, as you can see, my bike is here. Here's my first cone. If I measure this, this is less than a foot. This is not how you want to approach the first cone in a cone weave. What you want to do is get out at least six to nine feet out. 
not staring at the cone. You have all this room to look straight ahead. Now, I say you can look far down as possible to the last cone if you're good at that. If you're not used to looking that far down, definitely do not look down directly at the cone. Keep your head up, look maybe three or four cones ahead as you approach each cone. So you wanna come out wide out here, let the bike lean under you, head straight up, sitting straight up, not leaning with the bike, come out all the way out farther this way and then continue on down. So what I'm gonna do is put the camera at the opposite end. Matter of fact, I'll leave it right here just to get past the first cone to show you what I'm talking about. And then I'm gonna put it at the opposite end and ride twice. The first ride, I'm just gonna go directly toward the cone where my front wheel will always clear it. Then the second ride, I'm gonna go wide and show you how you really dip that bike and let it lean and work under you. You're sitting straight up, your back straight up. If you're doing this and you have a backrest, I would suggest you move the backrest because we tend to get comfortable on our backrest. And a lot of times when we have our course, we make riders move their backrest if they're struggling with something like this or struggling with anything in the course because they like to sit back and they don't have enough time to switch their arms around. So when you sit straight up, you can actually maneuver the bike a little better. So straight up, back up, looking where you want to go, not down at the corner and let the bike move under you. So I'm going to get on it and ride the first one so you can see how the distance I was talking about, about coming out. I don't know which side I'm going to do it yet. Okay, on the bike, all geared up. I like to gear up 100% of the time. You don't want to go on the ground doing this stuff, especially if you're new and you don't have all your gear on. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to approach it. Like right here, I see an obstacle. I don't want to approach it there. You're doing a cone weave, come all the way out here. That's my first turn. Okay, before I get started, I want to go over a term that if you're into firearms, you probably heard of this term before. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And that's with all slow skills. It calls slow skills for a reason. You take it slow and smooth. As you get better, you'll realize the smooth is starting to get faster. Now, I don't have a firearm channel, obviously, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Sight, picture acquisition, squeezing the trigger. Slow, 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 slow. When that first round surprises you, you're not jerking. Same thing here on a motorcycle. Slow is smooth. Little pressure on that rear brake, not bouncing, not jerking. I mean, if I could do it on a big gold wing, I have no doubt that all of you who are watching this video can actually do this. So my first run, what I'm gonna do is just come straight down the cones, nice and slow. You'll see that front wheel clear, but the rear wheel or the saddlebags may not clear. I'm not gonna intentionally try to hit any cones. So let's get started. Okay, matter of fact, I'm just gonna come from this direction going so you see the rear of the bike. No, I go the other way so you can see the front wheel clearing and maybe the rear wheel may not clear. Like I said before, I want to intentionally knock any cones down. But you will see the rear wheel, the front wheel will clear, but the rear wheel may not. So I'm coming too close. I'm just nervous trying not to hit any cones. The front wheel is clearing all of them. I don't know if I hit any yet, but that's what you call rear wheel cheat. I didn't hit any, but you get the picture. This is slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I'm gonna do it from the opposite direction, going in a straight pattern without really leading the bike. Nice and slow to show you if I get too close with my front wheel to that cone, most likely the rear wheel is gonna hit it. So what I'm doing, I mean, I know for sure I'm clearing it with the front wheel. That's not a problem. I didn't hit any that time. Oh, I'm doing good. <laughs> but all this is relevant out there in the street. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you that how you approach this exercise. This is why you wanna go out wide just in case you are using shorter cone or tennis ball. See, where I am now is a perfect position. I go out wide, I'm still gonna go slow. I'm not going fast. See, I'm just trying to go smooth as possible now, leaning the bike, going smooth. Smooth, 
steady throttle, the pressure on the rear brake, and going through it. I'm gonna do it from the opposite side. Nice and smooth. As you progress, because remember, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice brings progress. Opposite side, sitting straight up, not on my backrest, weaving through them. That's another tip, sit straight up, take your back brakes off. Now obviously, when you're riding in everyday riding out there in the street, you come to a parking lot with a bunch of potholes that you need to maneuver around, most likely you're not gonna take the back press off, but this is just practice. So now that I did it slowly a couple of times, let me take up the pace just a little bit where I have to lean the bike a little bit more. I still wanna start all the way out here, going a little faster, gotta dip it a little bit more. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. The slower you go, the smoother it's going to be. And you're going to start going faster without realizing it. But remember, this is slow maneuvers. It's not fast maneuvers. Okay, and all it's going to help you, especially when you do your U-turns. In fact, if you notice when I go down that direction, when I make that last, that very last cone, I don't stop. I do another weave and I make my U-turn. Look where I want to go, stand in the friction zone, steady throttle as steady as possible. And when I talk about steady throttle, I like to keep mine around 11 to 1500 RPM. This is not absolute. Every bike is different. I'm riding a big Goldwing. You know my bike is called Big Easy. And if I'm doing it on Big Goldwing, you can do it on any bike. I have that much confidence in you. One, well, two last times. This time I'm trying to go a little faster. Remember speed, you really gotta concentrate with speed and I may knock some of the cones down. Let's see how fast I can go through it. Yep, knock one down. I'm gonna leave it down and come back and go through faster a little bit more. This is why when you're doing your slow, slow skill practice, unless you are in a rodeo and you're doing it for time, speed doesn't matter. Get through it, not too slow, not too fast. This is gonna be a little quicker. I'm leave that one down on the ground. I knock any more down? Nope. Now, let me go pick this one up and I'm gonna show you what I actually have. I don't know if the camera gonna pick it up from this, this quickly. What I have is my smaller cones under here because these lighter cones that you can buy from Amazon, you know, you can pick these cones up at Walmart. Matter of fact, let me show you what they look like. I'm gonna give you two different ones. I don't have a marker on this one, so I'm gonna show you this, this one and the last one. Simple. This is faded. So we had our last group called As the Wheels Turn. We used these cones out. This one faded. This is relatively new. This one's probably about six years old. This one is over 20 years old. But what I do, I have is a small MSF cone there because these are very lightweight. So when you purchase it, you got to remember, you don't want to do this on a windy day because things will be all over the place. But what you can do is get a piece of chalk, mark an X, put the cone down just in case the wind blow it. But you don't want to be chasing cones all over the place. I'll do one last time and I'm gonna wrap it up. Okay. One last time, at a little speed. Why? Why I'm doing it faster? Because I've been going slow. See that weave? I've been going slow, and now slow is smooth and smooth is faster. At speed, That's it. So let's wrap this up. Go practice basic. This is basic cone weave. And if you do not have cone, go in the parking lot. Use the lines. The lines are nine feet. Now, I can rip through nine feet with my front wheel. But if I get in the parking lot, put cones up and try to rip through nine feet, I know my back wheel probably going to hit it. But as long as I take it slow and smooth, it should not be a problem. Like I said, go check out that parking lot weave video and you get in the parking lot, start doing these things and it's gonna help you out in the long run. But if y'all riding today, remember, ride long, ride hard, ride strong, and most importantly, ride safe. For Boots and Jeans Riders, I'm Rich and I'm out. Peace. Y'all know I'm about to get some more practice in.